First thing that comes to anyone's mind when they see this is how this could have possibly happened under any company's watch. With no official statement from the company, fans were left to speculate, and speculate they did. On February 22, 2015, actor Yoshiko met in what can be colorfully described as a light bulb falling in a mouse trap. The following is the clearest picture of what took place that night, amalgamated from various forum posts and Dave Meltzer's reporting on the incident. Yoshiko is a protege of Nane Takahashi, original ace, Joshi legend of the 90s, and one of the bookers of stardom. A good old fashioned big monster that would have fit right into old AJW. It's safe to say that Yoshiko is a throwback to that era of Joshi. Also, keep in mind that at the time of the shoot, she was also quite popular in the World of Stardom Championship at the top of the promotion. Act Yasukawa was on the other side of the coin. She's of the new school. She's not a shooter or a traditional pretty baby face. Act was the new school heel, who was just cool and popular at the time. She comes from an entertainment background. Also, she's beautiful in an industry where looks matter a lot and in a company that favors beautiful women who are also good wrestlers. She's probably in the top five in popularity of stardom history. I think it's more than fair to say that Stardom was a more dangerous company back then. The Yoshiko Act shoot is one of the most violent and more famous incidents, but it's unfortunately not the only one. For example, we can point to a match where Nane beat up an up-and-coming Kairi Hojo. Nane lost the match as she was supposed to, but she made sure that Kairi got her face smashed before the pin. Now, this is where people in charge matter to the conversation. It's not a coincidence that Nane left Stardom after the Yoshiko Act shoot, started her own company, and main evented with Yoshiko as soon as she could. There's a conversation to be had about old school Japanese wrestling values versus new school Japanese wrestling values. There are a lot of behind the scenes stories and videos about Japanese wrestling from the 80s and especially the 90s involving an unacceptable amount of physical abuse. Nane is a product of the 90s and because of that, she and by association Yoshiko see things differently than Western fans do today. Not making excuses for unacceptable behavior, just trying to give context to where they come from. Now, there is quite a bit behind the incident, jealousy being a big factor. Yoshiko, despite beginning to wrestle two years before ACT had, didn't have seniority over her. Yoshiko had used her size over talent to move her way through stardom, whereas ACT was naturally gifted despite injuring herself constantly due to her poor health. Yoshiko and ACT were members of opposite stables much like Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, hence the rivalry between the two. Both women held a title, but the match was for Yoshiko's, who was supposed to lose, and she didn't want to lose to Act, who is considered a rising star and received a lot of praise over her talent, which Yoshiko never got. Maybe I'm speculating a bit here, but please bear with me. Allegedly, Yoshiko was told to put Act over, and bad blood ensued. 
things were said by both stables. Act was a far better talent than Yoshiko. Yoshiko wouldn't put her over because she is stronger and bigger than her. And if she wanted the title, she'd have to take it from her. Essentially challenging Act to a fight, which is unprofessional conduct to say the least. Now in Japan, when things get personal between talent, they take it up in the ring. So management knew there was real heat here beforehand. The start of the match was Act showing Yoshiko she wasn't afraid of her. The referee had the authority to end this match as things started to get out of hand, as Yoshiko had Act on the mat at one point doing a ground and pound. The ref was reportedly fired after the incident. Yoshiko gave a half-hearted apology, relinquished her title, and retired. And the person in charge, Nane, stepped down from the promotion due to poor handling of the situation, and then started a new promotion and signed Yoshiko. In the years since the incident, Stardom has changed a lot as a company. ACT came back to the ring for a short run at the end of 2015 before retirement, probably the company's way of allowing her to go out on her own terms, but also did a bit of managing in 2016, and still visits as a fan when she can from time to time. As far as I'm aware, there are no hard feelings between her and Stardom. These days, she works for GPS Pro and does theater. Still very much every bit of the artist. To this day on YouTube, you can still find people reacting to the match. And even though it's been six years since the incident took place, for most people, that's where the story ends. And for many years, that's where it ended for us as well. But questions still left to be answered, and the popularity of all of the videos. It was only going to be a matter of time before there was another chapter to be written in this story. On February 11, 2017, Yoshiko joined the ranks of Lesnar, Lashley, Punk, and Hager, making the jump over to mixed martial arts, making her debut for Road FC it's against Chun Sung Yu. But unlike other wrestlers who had made the jump, Yoshiko was not being followed over to the sport in hopes of seeing a wrestler do well in the world of mixed martial arts. Most wrestling fans had followed her in hopes of seeing karma come to collect in some form or another. Did Yoshiko disappoint them? Yoshiko's wild and heavy hands were able to dispatch her opponent within the first round. And even if it's not what some fans wanted to see, this was one of the first times anyone had seen a genuine smile on Yoshiko's face. And it's easy to know why. With a first round finish in her MMA debut, Yoshiko was back in the game. And regardless of what some in the wrestling community thought about Yoshiko, she could be a good fit for the Asian MMA scene. But they don't necessarily have an overabundance of heels. And with that vacuum in the market comes the opportunity to be able to cash in on the hate. And Yoshiko was planning to do just that. Yoshiko continued her wrestling gimmick over into her mixed martial arts career, and it did not take long for her to put pen to paper on what was to be her second bout, a rematch of her first bout. But this time, much, much more promotional material was being put out by Road FC to build up the fight, indicating that they likely saw a little more of an upside in Yoshiko than they did for her first bout, somebody on their hands that could become a star in more than one sport. Yoshiko's second bout was more similar to the stardom incident than it was her first mixed martial arts match. She got into the ring, she got her opponent to the ground, and she pummeled her with one big difference from the stardom encounter. This time, Yoshiko wasn't looking for a knockout and wasn't looking for a stoppage via punches. Yoshiko was able to finish this one off with a submission. With another finish on her record, Yoshiko's profile in the MMA community and her footprint overall was starting to grow. She was enjoying a career resurgence, and whereas most people would take that opportunity to hone their craft, Yoshiko 
Honestly, it may just be best to let her explain it. Wait a minute! You what? In case it hadn't become really obvious, Yoshiko wasn't exactly taking her growth as a martial artist seriously. And I can already see the comments asking whether or not man, I tried to get some clarification over what happened over in stardom. Well, as for questions about what happened over in stardom, all these years later and we were still no closer to finding out what actually happened that night but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't changed Yoshiko hadn't changed and anyone who knows anything about combat sports knows that there is one thing that spells disaster for a winning record and that's stagnation Yoshiko's next fight was going to be against a new opponent. This time she would be facing Young Ji Kim. An 0-2 fighter from South Korea. This was expected to be more standard fare from Yoshiko where she comes in and dominates an opponent with maybe not the best record to speak of. 0-2 isn't exactly what most people would be facing when they are on a 2-0 win streak and actually looking to move up the ranks in some sort of meaningful way. This seemed very much like Yoshiko had already become very comfortable where she was at. In the lead up to the fight, Kim portrayed a underdog with a can-do attitude. Very, very traditional baby face. Yoshiko portrayed Yoshiko. On paper, it looked like all of those wrestling fans who had followed her hoping to see a stardom receipt handed out were going to have to wait just a little bit longer to see. But then, the fight happened. Hit my name. Hit my music! I'm the champ! Hit my music! Hit my music! Immediately following the opening bell, what many would have considered a gimme fight for Yoshiko, were treated to something quite the opposite, as Yoshiko was battered through the duration of the entire fight by her much smaller opponent. It seemed that after all this time, the woman with the moniker of Facebreaker was finally on the other end of one of those one-sided beatings that she was all too happy and eager to put on others. Yoshiko had finally been humbled. Her winning streak was over. Soon after, she retired from mixed martial arts. The 
So where is Yoshiko today? In 2020, World of Stardom welcomed Yoshiko back amidst a little bit of controversy. Given how she left the company, that could have only been expected. Whether or not Yoshiko has actually changed enough to be welcomed back to the Stardom fans with open arms, or if her old habits possibly continued and followed her back into professional wrestling remains to be seen. But it's safe to say that she learned one of the most valuable lessons that you can learn in the fight game. You're not in a fight until there's pressure, resistance, overcoming something. And I don't think that you know crap about somebody until they're tested. Because great fighters, when the fight came to them, they found a way to do what they had to do. To be that, not to be the power puncher, not to be the aggressor, not to be just those things, to be the titan, to be the viking, to be the samurai, to be the warrior, to be those things, it has to be inside you. You have to believe it. You know, a lot of times people lie in life. There's certain places you can't lie. You know, sometimes we say that the ring is the chamber of truth. It is. Because just like in other places in life too, when the moment comes for those kind of serious things, you have to know that you're it. You say that you're the conqueror, you're Alexander the Great, you're all those things, right? But when the moment comes and you didn't intimidate the guy, that didn't work. You have to believe that you're really that guy. That's where the truth matters. And if you're a guy that you do weak things and you know they were weak things and now you got to do a strong thing, how do you become strong when you know that you did those weak things and you know that's really you and you got a guy across from you that doesn't give a shit about how hard you punch, you're going to have to make him a believer by doing it and doing it in a difficult place because he's going to make it difficult. When that happens, you got to feel like that person. And when you don't feel like that person, you got a problem. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. And a huge thank you again for 50,000 subscribers. If you're new here, be sure to hit subscribe. If you liked the video, please make sure to leave a like and a comment below and tell us your thoughts. If you wanted to help out the channel as well, we also have memberships available. And you can check out our Twitch links in the description box below as well as join our Discord. That's all we have for you today. We'll see you in the next one.